Hey booktube, Chelsea the Reading Outlaw here to do my August wrap up as quick as I can. I read 14 books in the month of August which is really not too bad especially considering that August was back to school month and also the month that I ended up emergency getting my gallbladder taken out. So if you follow me on Twitter or if you saw on social media you might know that uh, yeah last week I ended up going to the emergency room with like really severe stomach pains and it turns out my pesky little gallbladder just didn't feel like working in my body anymore so now it's gone and I'm pretty much recovered and here I am to talk to you guys about all of the books that I read in August. Uh, I was lucky enough that I didn't read anything below a three star book so I'm gonna try my best to do my wrap ups as quick as possible so like 10 words or less per book and then there might be some fudging in there but the three star books I read were the first one was Mind to Possess by Nalini Singh. This is the fourth book in the Sai Changeling series. This is a childhood friends to lovers like working together to rescue children kind of story so it scratched a bunch of fandom itches that I love a whole lot. The next one was another Nalini Singh book. This one was Hostage to Pleasure. This one uh, is a like sniper redemption story and those are super complicated but also stories that I super love like a whole lot because they can be very tense and very dramatic and you guys know that like I live for the angst and nothing is angst like a reformed sniper. Uh, the next book was Branded by Fire, also by Nalini Singh. I'm listening to these all on audio. They're all part of the Audible Escape like romance package and I've been doing a lot of like craft work and house cleaning and getting things ready to go for the year and stuff so like been big on the audiobook so that's why I'm like working my way so much through the side changeling books if you want more in-depth reviews and my thoughts on the series as a whole I will link below and up above the first chunk of five books in the series that I already did one of my sexy Saturdays on and then there will be another one upcoming where I talk about books six through ten um, the next book I finished was um, Branded by Fire. This is a really, really erotic and very hot dual dominant narrator narrative. So the, both of the main characters in this book are dominants within their own like changeling packs. And so dealing with that dual dominance and that lack of submission that it gets into like the politics of the world and the social structures of the world while also providing like really great like sexual tension and like it's just very hot like they fuck very early on on the page and it's just like it's a lot even for the series that's already been established um after that was blaze of memory this is a um like ticking time bomb the heroine has undergone some like psychic um restructuring basically and she's been sent after the hero to kill him but then she falls in love with him but also he knows that that's probably why she's there and like it's very complicated the drama really gets amped up because there is like I said this kind of ticking time bomb sensation with the heroine of like when or like what is the code or what's going to happen that's going to send her over the edge into doing this thing that she's been like programmed to do and of course because Nalini Singh is the way that she is they manage to like find a way out of it um that those are all of the three star Psy Changeling books that I read. There were four of them. Um, exiting out of the Psy Changeling world but staying in the three star books, I read Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is a female female Lord of the Flies that really falls flat in the second half. Um, it's set up as a really great kind of like creepy dark fantasy in the first half and then thriller that we learn about the transition of transition that transitions us into the second half of the book it just really didn't work for me and then the last three-star book was the siren and the sword by cecilia tan this is another fantasy erotic romance in which our main character gets accepted to harvard but it's not harvard it's a school within harvard called veritas where like bisexuality is a requirement and they have weird like sex magic rituals and like they're fucking in the library and like it's just very erotic and like it's very kind of I don't know I don't want to say silly as like a diminutive or demeaning word but it was just very light and very fun and very silly uh, moving into the four star books the first one was the ghost map the story of London's most terrifying epidemic and how it changed science cities and the modern world by Stephen Johnson I read this for the newts read-along this is the story of the cholera outbreak in 
in the 1850s and Dr. John Snow and his like on the ground epidemiological traceback of how this cholera broke out, where it came from, blah, blah, blah. It's one of the first like major cases of boots on the ground epidemiology. It's a super important case book. This book is about cholera. It's kind of gross, just a heads up, but I really, really enjoyed it. The next four star book I read was Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This is a really, really, really sweet, powerful look at faith and queerness and queer identity. Uh, both of our main characters live in Provo. Our main character, one of our main character Tanners is out to his family and bisexual, but he's in the closet to his social group. Our other character, Sebastian, is his mentor in his writing class. They form a relationship. They have to struggle through what that will mean for each of them. It's just really beautiful. It got four stars instead of five because sometimes the narrative feels a little bit unbalanced. I listened to it this time on audio and loved it just as much as when I read it in print. After that, my next four star read was Race to the Sun by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is a middle grade fantasy like hero's quest about Najoni Begay and her brother Mac. Uh, I loved this book. I want everybody to read this book. This book is a book that you've read a hundred times, but yeah, I guarantee it. You've never read it like this. It hits all those great middle grade beats. So many interesting Navajo folklore myths and legends woven into the plot line here. I just really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, it's another great installment in the Rick Riordan imprint. After that was Bonds of Justice, another Nalini Singh book. This was a four star read for me. This is about a JSI and a member, like a homicide detective. The JSI is a member of like the Justice Psy. So it's got this very like procedural NCIS, like CSI, um, SVU kind of like crime dramatic background. And you guys know how much I live for that on top of being a romance book. Then after that was The Valedictorian of Being Dead trigger warnings for this book for um, severe depression, severe treatment for depression, suicidal ideation, attempts at suicide. This book is very heavy, but if you can read it, I thoroughly recommend it. Uh, the Valedictorian of Being Dead is by blogger Heather Armstrong, who wrote for Deuce for years, who writes in this book about her struggles with depression and the radical treatment she attempts in which she basically is made chemically brain dead 10 times in the effort to do like a hard reset on her brain. It's fascinating. It's intense. It's emotional. It's lovely. Uh, and then the last book that I wanted to talk about was yet yeah, another side changeling book. This one is Play of Passion. This one is about a uh, kind of like childhood pining soft power hero going after this dominant female. And it's so so good and delicious and the way that the power structures and power dynamics play out throughout their relationship is just really really beautiful um and then that brings us to our five star reads for the month i had two five star reads both of which were romance novels both of which were contemporaries one of which was a debut one of which is by a new favorite author the first one was the right escape by cherish reed this is a book we read for podcasts so i won't say too much about it other than this is a book for romance lovers book lovers writers this is a book about um, escaping to find yourself. It's set in Ireland. There are storms and bed sharing and all the tropes that you love on top of some really, really interesting kind of more academic discussions of romance. And I just really, really, really love it. Cherish Reed is a debut author. The next one and the last five star book that I read this month was American Love Story by Adriana Herrera. This is another one of in her like American Dreamers series. This is the story of Patrice, who is a professor who's also an activist in his community, who's moved upstate to Ithaca, who is dancing around his attraction to and his like basically refusal to admit that he's slowly falling in love with Easton, who is an ADA, an assistant district attorney. There are problems in Ithaca with traffic stops of brown and black students and the slowly boiling community tensions just add fuel to the fire of why Patrice and Easton have so much trouble being together or feeling like they can be together. It's so intense. It's so good. It's so carefully put together. I love every single word that Adriana writes. I love every single book of hers that I've read. I cannot wait for more. I feel like that's the best possible note to leave this wrap up on. Please let me, if you've made it this far, leave me an emoji down below to just to let me know that you're here, that you stopped by, that you're saying hello. Let me know what you read this month. Let me know what you have coming up, what's going on in your bookish life. You can find me all over my social media, which links are in the down bar, of course. And until next time, friends, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have happy reading.